So dear learners, we are continuing our discussion on unit 5 that is organizing and this is the last part of the video and this part is also based on the <coughs> part 2 because in part 2 we discussed about the organizational structure of 3 kinds of organization, no? line organization, line and staff and functional. Here we shall discuss 3 ta other types of organization structure. One is committee organization, second one is project organization and the third one is matrix organization. Okay. So, first let us start with committee organization. In every organization, though individuals will work in an organization, but those individual works need to be coordinated. And in a functional type of organization, what happens? The marketing department will have this marketing perspective, finance department will have the finance perspective. So, there is a right, call to as functional supremacy. Each and every function will try to advocate their supremacy. And in the process, what happens? The functional conflicts develop. And when the functional conflicts develop, ultimately that disturbs the achievement of the organizational objective. So to a great extent, committee kind of organization, formation of committees can help in minimizing those conflicts. It can reconcile various differences and it can work out a concerted course of action. So what is a committee? Committee is a group of two or more appointed, nominated or elected persons to consider, to discuss, to decide and to recommend or maybe to report on some issues or matters related to the functioning of an organization and the committee will be given that assignment that this is a committee on manpower planning. This committee will take care of the various aspects of manpower planning and will recommend certain measures to the organization. So this is good, is not it? Still, we are supposed to discuss the merits in an organized manner. So what is the first merit as the given in the unit? It is better and balanced decisions. One person taking a decision may not be true, may not be good, may not be effective. A number of persons taking a decision, different perspectives will come. So better and balanced decisions can be expected as committees consider the problems for more than one point of view. Different views emerge. Effective communication can be achieved as members can easily and effectively communicate their ideas and viewpoints with freeness and frankness. And this is the responsibility of the chairman of the committee. That the different views of the different participants should be encouraged to emerge. And those need to be discussed and then ultimately it needs to be concluded. So it promotes ideas as emerging during the process of interaction, during the process of discussion amongst the members. Still, there could be certain demerits of committees. What could be the demerits? It consumes excessive amount of time. One person taking a decision quickly can take a decision. Committee might take one meeting, might take several meetings. So, it, at the same time, because of these repeated meetings and all these things, the people might lose interest also. Excessive openness are involved in convening and holding committee meetings. Because of that, eh, what happens? The different committee meetings have got certain opportunity cost. It becomes time consuming, cost increases. There are a large number of members in a committee and so it is very difficult to maintain secrecy of the issues. Suppose committee is supposed to discuss within the committee only certain issues. The number of members are there, someone might leak some information, some crucial information to outsiders right? that might jeopardize the functioning of the organization. Because before taking the decision, the information gets leaked. So committee has got the advantages, at the same time committee has got certain disadvantages also. But despite these disadvantages, committees are quite helpful in functioning of an organization. Now let us discuss the other form of organization, project organization. So dear learners, we all know about say lower swan city, right? hydroelectric project. We know about Kopili hydroelectric project. These are all projects. So these are all projects of what? These are all projects of an organization called NEPCO. 
right? Northeast Electric Power Corporation Limited. So NIPCO is an organization. Within that organization, each and every project site, there is a project organization. Is that it? There is a project organization. So that project organization will be responsible for that particular project. Project 1, project 2, like that. So this gives a kind of different challenges. Each project team has specialists in different fields. Suppose each project will be having say <coughs> civil engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer and this type of structure is temporary in nature. Project is commissioned, the project may be withdrawn, is that it? And designed to perform a specific task with the help of specialists drawn from various departments. What are the merits? It can be structured as per the requirement of the project. Project is very large, so you can deploy more people. Project is small, you can deploy small number of people. It makes use of specialized knowledge and skill wherever required. Demerits, the project manager faces problems in dealing with the specialist from different fields. Suppose the project manager is a chemical engineer and uh, there is an electrical engineer under him. For that particular project, the electrical activities right, need to be taken care of, so an electrical engineer is there. So the electrical engineer knows his discipline. The chemical engineer might find it difficult to coordinate the activities of the electrical engineer, is not it? So specialists are there, so dealing with all these specialists, the, the generalists sometimes find it difficult. Decision making also sometimes becomes difficult for the major project manager who may be pressurized by the specialist. So that could be a problem. The third type of organization is matrix organization. Under these types of structure, there are functional managers and project managers. Suppose I gave you in the example of say NIPCO. In NIPCO, there is a chief engineer electrical. In the project engineer or project also, there is an electrical engineer. At the same time, in the project, there is a project manager also. That electrical engineer in that particular project might receive command from, the, from his respective project manager. At the same time, he might receive command from the chief engineer electrical who is sitting at the headquarters. So, functional managers are in charge of specialist resources such as production, quality control, inventory, marketing, finance, engineering as I have given the example. So, project managers are in charge of one or more projects, could be. What are the merits? It utilizes the benefits of both functional organization and technical specialization. Electrical engineer, he is a technical person. Chief engineer electrical, he knows better, he is more experienced, we can avail his experiences. At the same time, project level also, we can avail the experiences of the electrical engineer who is stationed at the project. It is flexible. It allows better and quick decisions. Otherwise, at the project level, if we do not have this kind of structure, we will not be able to take decisions at the project level. It improves communication and interaction among project units and functional heads. It leads to better coordination. However, this is essential, but it has got certain disadvantages also. What is this? It does not follow the principle of unity of command. As I have stated, the electrical engineer will be governed by the guidance of the project manager, at the same time he is likely to be governed by the chief engineer electrical who is sitting at the headquarters. But at the same time this is a deficiency, Without this, with this deficiency we will have to co-live. Co Quick decisions are not possible at all times. We will have to evolve mechanism of making this first. But being the, we having this limitation should not deter us in having a matrix type of organization because this is a requirement of complex types of organization. So this is an organization structure which has to be there, which has to be in existence in complex type of organizations, more especially in project type of organization, more especially in marketing organizations, suppose Hindustan Unilever or say Godrej. Godrej company has got its printers, equipment, Godrej company has got its locking divisions, Godrej company has got its fast moving consumer goods, different divisions. So in order to coordinate with all these divisions, they might also go, they might be required to go for this matrix type of organization. So dear learners, you go to the material, you have gone to the videos, possibly you will find it quite easier to understand. And still, you will be asked some multiple choice questions on this. 
सपोज द मेरिट्स ऑफ मैट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंक्लूड द फॉलोइंग एंड यू आर सपोज टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हिच वन इज द मेरिट ऑफ मैट्रिक्स टाइप ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू दैट एक्सटेंड यू हैव टू नो द मेरिट्स ऑफ मैट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द मेरिट्स ऑफ मैट्रिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो एन्जॉय रीडिंग थैंक यू